So today we're going to get started on a two-year-old filly here. She just arrived yesterday, and um, I want to I want to start teaching her to hook onto me. But I've got to get it to the round pen first, and I want to make sure that going to the round pen, I'm not promoting anything bad. Now this filly, when she showed up yesterday, the lady that bought her here, she the lady was leading her by the snap right there. So, you know. If I can suggest one thing you don't ever do is lead your horse like this, like it's, a, like it's a prisoner and you've got it in handcuffs and you're taking it somewhere, okay? Just have them go when you go, stop when you, you stop, you know, just like horses do. You never see one horse holding onto another horse. If it gets too close, that other horse will kick and make it go away. Um, leading them by the chin teaches them to be pushy, okay? Because you're always putting pressure on them and they're never getting off of it. You're just this constant pressure. They learn to, uh, you know, they learn to ignore that pressure. Another thing it does, it will promote them being spooky. And I'll tell you why in a second. It will also promote them having separation anxiety. And you're probably thinking, what does leading them by the chin have to do with separation anxiety? Well, the reason being is when you lead them by the chin and they kind of lean on you, you know, like this, you see a lot of people leading their horses and the horses are kind of pushing on them. The only time in nature that happens is with a foal before he's weaned from his mother, okay? They're not weaned and they walk along and they're like, oh, that scares me, mum, and they kind of lean over here against their mother sort of thing, okay? That's the only time that happens. But what else does a foal in nature do? Well, he leaves his mother and he gets distracted and goes over there and chases a butterfly and whatever, and then all of a sudden, oh, my God, where's mum? Ah, ah. He has separation anxiety, okay? He comes running back and then he crashes into mum and, and now he's good, okay? When you wean those foals and put them in, you know, when they get weaned and put out with all these other yearlings, they don't, they're not allowed to lean on other yearlings. That other yearling will go, hey, get the hell away. And they'll kick the heck out of them and say, get away from me. You need to find your own place in life now. Okay, so from leading those horses around by the chin like that really promotes, you know, low self-esteem, if you want to call it that, but, you know, insecurity. They're not, they're not, they don't know who's in charge and they're kind of worried and you're their mother and all that sort of stuff. Um, so anyway, don't do it. But I'm going to get her out and I want to get her to the round pen to start working on getting her to hook onto me, which is the first thing I teach. But I wanted to show you how I'm going to get her there because there'll be a lot of stuff happens between here and there which will be very, very important for you guys to see, you know, if you've got one that does this. Okay, so I'm just going to bring her out here and I've got the lead rope about this far from her head. That's about the distance I'd like her to, to stay away from me. So I'm just going to step out here. See so right there, she's already crowded into me. I'm just going to step and walk over there like that. Right here, she's going to crowd into me. I might step and walk that way. So I'm not pulling on her. She's pulling on herself. Anytime, anytime her head goes past me like that, I'm just going to go the other way. Did you notice that time was the first time she didn't actually get pulled on because she actually followed me that time. So I'm just gonna walk over here and there we go. You see she didn't get pulled on that time and I think if I stop here, she will stop a bit. No, she didn't. She should stop a bit further back here in a minute. Now right there, she just bumped into my elbow. If I was a wall and she ran into me, no one would go, oh, that wall, that wall was bad, it had hit that horse. Right here, my elbow was here and she bumped into it and I helped her bump into it right there, but I did not move my feet. I didn't walk over to her and crack her in the head. That's animal abuse. But if they come over here and run into your elbow, that'd be just like I was another horse and I was eating food. I'm here eating food and she came over and got in my space We're and I kicked her. Did you see the distance away from me? She stopped right then. Whereas five minutes ago, she thought being on top of me was a good idea. Now, you might notice right then, I haven't told her to stand still. When I walked out of that stall, when I first walked out, I stopped. She just kept walking. She wasn't paying any attention to me whatsoever. Okay? And then when I walked along and I'd stop, she'd walk past me. She didn't stop when I stopped. She wasn't paying any attention to me, and I went the other way. Now, already, there's a huge difference. See, she's actually stopped mid-stride. She stopped like that. So now I'm just going to you know, walk around here a little bit and see if I can um, make this a little better before I go off to the round pen. I'm just going to stop right there and she stops back there. 
Can you see that's the distance I wanted to be away from me? I didn't tell it to be that distance away from me. I never said I want you to stop over there. Basically I made the wrong thing hard and the right thing easy. When she came up and went past me, I went the other way. And pretty soon she gets to where when she starts getting close to me, I might go the other way. So she slows down and waits for me to maybe go left or right. The other thing I did making the wrong thing hard and the right thing easy was she, when she walked up into my space, she bumped into my elbow. I didn't say, get back please, can you go over there? I didn't tell her what to do. I just said, do not be here. You can find somewhere else to stand. And you can see how quickly she found another place to stand. But the big thing I want you to get out of this is, I didn't tell her to stand over there. I didn't tell her to stand still. I just said, don't be here. And the other thing I did was make her pay attention to me. You know, if, if she wasn't paying attention and I turned and walked like that, she just ran into that lead rope, okay? I, di I didn't pull on her, okay? Me standing still and pulling would be pulling on her. I walked and she had plenty of opportunity to turn and follow me and she didn't. And when she didn't, she ran into that lead rope. I'll just try that again. You see the difference already? I went to go and she got herself ready to go. You see, even before we've done any groundwork with her, she's already, if you watch her again when I go that way, she's already starting to step that inside hind foot over like you would want to do when they hook onto you and follow you around, like you want to do when you teach them to, um, to um, disengage behind. Now, when I walked off down there and she didn't follow me, that hind end didn't step up under there. But if you watch her this time and she's good, you'll see her as I go, she will get ready to make that turn. Right? Oops, she didn't really as much. There it is. Let's see, I'm going to walk down here and right here I'm going to stop. See when my feet stop moving, her feet stop moving. Okay? But like I said before, I didn't tell her to stop. And once again, you saw when she first came out of that stall, I walked out and I stopped and she just kept on walking. She wasn't paying any attention to me. I think she's pretty good minded. So all the stuff that's been done with her, you know, leading her around by the chin, um, maybe hasn't been that detrimental to her, but you can see, you can lead him around by the chin for two years or you can not do it at all. She's quite happy to do this. She doesn't need to be up here. She just thought she was supposed to be. But that's pretty good. So I'm going to, um, Walk her up to the round pen and we'll get started.